Hi everyone, I'm Colleen, I'm the developer relation at Wormhole and today we'll do a deep dive into native token transfer. This video aims to help builder offenders uh, like you to understand entities potential and evaluate if this is the right uh, solution for your application. I will cover the fundamental mechanism and component to help you get familiar with the tech. We will explore how Entity can work with other Wormhole product and finally guiding you through an integration process. So if you are a developer, hang on to the second part of this video. We'll use the Entity CLI to deploy token from Base to Solana using a burn and min deployment model. So let's get started. Wormhole's native token transfer is an open source framework designed for transferring token across blockchain. One of its key strengths is that integrators maintain complete control over their token's behavior on each chain. And this includes everything from token standard and metadata to ownership, upgradability, and custom feature. It's important to note that Entities is not a token standard, so you won't need to modify your original token design. This flexibility extends to some crucial feature. First, integrator retain ownership, upgrade authority, and complete customization over the token contract. Um, second, you have the option to add a external verifier beyond Wormhole Guardians if you want an extra layer of security. There is no locking with Wormhole. It's designed to be as flexible as your project needs. When it comes to deploying your token with NTT, the possibilities are extensive. So our network currently support both EVM chain, Solana and Sui. So let's explore the two primary deployment models available for your token. First, there is the burn and mint model, which is ideal if you are launching a new token or you're looking to update uh, your contracts. In this model, tokens are burned on the source chain and minted on the destination chain. That way is effectively distributing your total token supply across multiple chain as a native multi-chain token. The alternative is our hub and spot model. Um, this is perfect for established projects that want to maintain their original token contract design. This approach uh, keeps your token locked on a central hub chain while minting equivalent token on the destination spot chain. So this way, it's ensuring backwards compatibility and maintaining a total supply control. At the heart of entity's architecture lie two essential components, managers and verifiers. So let's start with verifiers, also known as transceivers. Um, they are the backbone of our cross-chain communication system. Verifier operate through a sophisticated process. They receive transfer instruction from the manager, they calculate the delivery fees, and they ensure secure message relaying between chain. Each transfer is meticulously verified with transceivers working in concert with the manager to process only authorized transactions. What makes our system unique is its flexibility in the verification methods. You can configure various verification schemes from simple one-to-one -to, -one to more complex two-to-three setups without being locked into a single provider. So let's take the LIDO Rapstack ETH example. Um, they've implemented a 2 to 2 setup using both Wormhole and Axola for enhanced security. So for additional security control, we've implemented rate limiting features. It works in two directions. For outbound transfer, if transaction volume exceeds the set threshold, the system either queues them for a later processing or initiates a revert. On the receiving end, inbound transfer are monitored in a similar way. So if the destination chain reaches its capacity, transaction enter a manage queue until processing resources become available. Entity Manager is the entry point for transfers. It handles the business logic of locking, unlocking, or burning and minting tokens. It also implements reply protection to ensure all messages are unique and legitimate. Its job is to communicate with verifiers and to handle access control via the owner and poser roles. So let's have a look at those two roles. The owner and the poser are two key access control roles in Entity. Let's start with the owner. It has full control over the entity contract. It can perform all administrative functions. Please note that it has the exclusive ability to unpose contract if they have been posed. Typically, the owner is a multi-sig wallet or a DAO governance contract. Now the poser. It can pose entity contracts to temporarily halt a token transfer. So this is important for quickly responding to adverse events without needing a full governance process. Very important to note that it cannot impose 
uh, contract. Only the owner can do that. Um, and the poser role is often assigned to a different address than the owner for faster response to emergencies. One of the most powerful aspects of Wormall solution is the ability to work together. Take Wormall Connect, for instance. It's a React widget that is frequently paired with entity integrations. If you are looking to avoid building a custom front end from scratch, Wormall Connect is your answer. The implementation couldn't be simpler. It's just three lines of code in your React component, followed by a quick config file uh, that you update based on your entity deployment.json. If you want to extend your capability even further, well, you can also use the TypeScript SDK with Entity for more customized solution. Wormall Relaying provides automatic functionality right out of the box for all EVM chain in Solana. So by now, you see how Entity serves as a robust framework for teams seeking to create multi-chain token while maintaining complete control and flexibility. But we are not stopping here. In our next video, we'll walk you through a hands-on entity deployment using the CLI. Um, we'll show you how to set up a burn and mint mechanism for transferring a token from Base to Solana. Thank you very much for listening and let's start coding.